Good morning. I found something in this little book I like that I want to read to you. And Hannah Whitehall Smith wrote this. Once I knew what it was to rest upon the rock of God's promise, and it was indeed a precious resting place. But now I rest in his grace. He is teaching me that the bosom of his love is a far sweeter resting place than even the rock of his promise. Hannah Whitehall Smith. And the scripture is this, Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore run boldly with the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hebrews 4.16. And I have found that grace many times and I'm thankful for it. Grandma has learned that kind of stuff because I've been through the cotton patch, you know, the blackberry patch. Anyway, that's what we went through and picked blackberries. We wore overalls, you know, our daddy's bib overalls that you pin them right here. You have to buckle them and they come all the way down and then you put your socks, you put your pants down in your socks so that the chickers can't get you. We used to pick blackberries Man, did we have a time we would take buckets and we'd fill them up. Now, when we lived down in the mountains, which we did, my daddy worked for helping build the Skyline Drive down in North Carolina, which is still a famous drive. In those woods, there was lots of what we call huckleberries, and they're really a wild blueberry. And they were as big as the end of my little finger. I mean, big, juicy huckleberries and we'd go to the woods and we'd p pick those huckleberries and mom would make a pie out of those huckleberries when I was a little girl but a lot of times we ate most of them before we got home so a lot of times we didn't have enough to make a pie that's a fact Jack I have a lot of memories coming up this morning and I was thinking about sharing with you all if you're interested about my cell phone history and it was something because see, back when I was, I mean, we didn't get a telephone till I was about 14 years old, something like that. And then it was a party line and there was other farmers on it and it was out in farm country. And I, I don't know if it, I think it maybe was a three, four party, three or four party. And you had to wait, to, if somebody was on it, you say, excuse me, I need to use the phone or you would listen in on them. You learn a lot of interesting stuff that way. I did it some. I think we all did. I think they listened to us and we listened to them. You know how human nature is, maybe. They wanna know stuff. So that was my first phone. And then when I moved to New Albany, Indiana, finally when I got married, well, we didn't have a phone. We had no means of communication we didn't have a car, we rode the bus if we went anywhere. And when I was working and I got a job, while Buddy was finally got settled down a little bit and he was on boot camp, I got a job and he got a job for a while and I worked in a factory and I run an electric screwdriver making TVs. It was called Hoosier Cabinet and they made cabinets for TVs. You know, about this big and bigger. As big as it went was, I think, 13 inches. That was our biggest TV back. And now that reminds me of something else. One time to Walmart, on their special day, they had a sale on color, 13-inch color TVs for $99. You had to get in line. Well, we went early. I guess it was Good Friday or, you know, Black Friday sales many years ago. And the biggest TV at that time was like 21 inches. I got in line and I got me a 13 inch color TV. When we, when I moved to California, there was televisions was out at that time. They were all black and white. I'm just telling you some things that's going on. You never know what I'm gonna say next. 
But I remember that when I was pregnant, I got the money together and Jay, uh, Buddy was overseas. You know, him and number one, number two have the personalities so much alike. They're both kind, gentle men. And my family says he is so much like Buddy, just in his mannerisms and the way he is. He's wonderful and I love him. I love him every day, he's wonderful. So anyway, I got the money together to buy me 11 inch black and white TV. And I had a good girlfriend, she was pregnant also and her husband was also overseas. So we spent a lot of time together. And we would watch, they had three channels out in California where I was living at Long Beach. And it was a fine town, I liked it. But we would watch those TV shows together and to get a good picture, you had to have an antenna. So sometimes she would take turn moving the antenna so you could get a bit better picture. And sometimes I would carry the antenna over someplace else and hang it. We had a coat hanger. You put your antenna on and you could put it here, there, and yonder and get a better picture. 11 inch television, black and white. And later on, they came out with these screens that you could put in front of your black and white TV and it would could either be green or red. And some of them was three colors, like where the faces would be, it'd be pink. Up at the top, it would be brown. At the bottom would be another color. That way you had three colors on your black and white TV. What do you think about that? But they would change the color and it was interesting. A lot of people bought those screens. <laughs> we wanted color. Then I remember when color came out, back to the phones. So anyhow, when we moved to New Albany, because I want to tell you about my telephones. When we moved to New Albany and we got a house finally, down on Beeler Street, we got a shotgun house. <laughs> James says, also they're a slingshot house because you could shoot a slingshot all the way through it but you could shoot a shotgun all the way through it too because it was just all you could see from the front to the back. Sometimes they added bathrooms on the side or another room, but we just had the shotgun. And so when we got that house, I was pregnant with Kimberly and that been, she's 65 now, I think. So that's been 66 years ago. We got a phone and we had just one other party. I, I can, still remember how uh, I, it was a two-party line and we were so thankful to have a phone because this way I could call home and talk to my mom and dad because they had a phone then also but daddy didn't live much longer than that he passed away when I was seven months pregnant with Kimberly and I took it so hard he had TB and this doctor he has also had diabetes. And this doctor that worked with him up there said, you know, it, you only have TB in one lung. And if we remove that, you won't have TB anymore. And you could go home. Now it might be rough. You may have a long time recovering, but it's your choice. If you want to do that, we will remove that other lung. So daddy said, yes. So they took that lung out and he didn't have TB anymore. So he moved back home with mom and so we could be with daddy. But now what was I telling you? Oh yeah, telephone, back and forth. So finally we had that phone and dad moved back home. He was an invalid. Oh yes, I do wanna tell you, daddy was always witnessing to that he was a Jewish man and he did he was Jewish and he he believed in Jehovah only and not Jesus he did not think Jesus was the Messiah and and the Lord and so he would say Jesus loves you and he'd tell the pastor the doctor you know you re really need to receive Jesus and told him how to do it and he said oh yeah yeah you know thanks and went his way but years later, kiddos, and this really happened, and I told it before, that doctor, I was a dog groomer. Back years later, 
right here where I live. And he came to get his dog groomed. He had a little poodle. And would you believe, he's, I said, he told me his name. And I said, did you know a Tom Ayers? Because I recognized his name. He said, I sure did. I said, that's my daddy. He says, Tom Ayers was your daddy? I said, yes. He said, well, I want to tell you something. I'm a believer now. Whoa. He is a believer now. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior and him a Jewish man. What a wonderful thing. He'll be in heaven then. I imagine he's already gone because when he came for me to groom his dog, he had already retired. So I called my mom up. I had a phone. I called mom and I said, Mom, you will not believe this. But that doctor that removed daddy's lung came and I groomed his dog today. And he says he's a believer. He believes in Jesus. And he accepted him. Mom says she was absolutely amazed. Isn't that some story? True story. God does miracles in our lives, children. And I've seen a lot of them. Check into some of my videos about how we prayed for a millionaire and God sent him. And, that, and how Pat Day the jockey got saved and blessed us with a 45 foot fifth wheel. That's a good story. But anyhow, if you don't look at him, you don't know about it. But I have told so many things. But this doctor getting saved was one of the best miracles that I run into in my life. Now, we had other phones, and one of these days, I'm going to tell you how. Finally, we got a cell phone. Me. I, finally, you know, everybody had cell This is before we went on the evangelistic field, which I was 46, and Buddy was 48 years old when we started traveling full-time on Love Offering, telling people about Jesus from church to church. You know, we traveled Louisiana, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, where there's tornadoes in the spring. Anyhow, I got me a cell phone because all the truck drivers had cell phones. And when you travel, you could hear them on your CBs say, talk that they got their cell phones. So when we was finally got to traveling full time and we broke down, we waited for a truck driver to come along and he could phone and get us a help to either tow us in or do whatever we needed to do. And I told Buddy, we got to get a cell phone. So, but anyway, I got a cell phone finally. And I couldn't hardly keep track of it. I was always laying it down and leaving it here, there, yonder. So I got me one of these things that you put it on your hip and you keep it. That's where my cell phone is all the time. It's right here. And I got this one. And this is a pro. Look who's on it. That's number three. Isn't he? He's so handsome. I was listening to television this morning, and I on my TV I can tune in uh, anything off YouTube. So I was watching and how uh, President Trump, through a miracle of God, did not get killed. But yet another man did get killed. And that has made me so sad for that man that got killed and that one that got hurt so bad for that family. So, Lord, bless them and be with them. There's a lot of bad things happen sometimes. But President Trump was delivered, and that was such a close thing. He just turned his head just a little bit, and, it, and his ear was all bloody. They want to kill him. They want him dead. This is not to be in the U.S. of A. So pray for our country. God is good. And it's Satan that does these evil things. So we're in spiritual warfare. And that is true. So we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. And we pray for those in leadership over us, which we do do. And I've just had a good time today. I hope y'all watch and some of those others that are good. 
I enjoy talking to y'all. And I, uh, a man on TV this morning, and he was speaking at, I watched the convention of the Republicans. And this guy said, when you get up in the morning, he said, tell your loved ones you love them. Tell them every day. Tell people you love them. Well, I want to tell y'all, I love you. I love all y'all, all my grandchildren, my seniors, my cousins, and Miss Betty Shan. She did a cooking show the other day, and it was interesting. She did tacos like I never saw, and I've got to try it. And then there's uh, all around grandma. Us grandmas, I shout them out. Betty Shan, S-H-A-N. And then there's King, a uh, Jared King TV, who is fantastic with his Appalachian stories, and his wife, Queen Laura, L-O-R-A, and chit chat with Granny Pat. Now, she is a favorite, and I admire that. I, I can call her girl. She's, she's younger than me, ha ha. You know what she said? She said when she discovered me, she said, there is another grandma on YouTube, and I thought I was the oldest one. She's had three husbands. Now, she wrote this. She told this. And she said, and I only had one, and he ran away. She said that. <laughs> but she's a good entertainer, and I like, she entertains me with a lot of her stuff. Let's see, who else? Oh, yeah, 967 Andy. He does all kinds of stuff. He's got all kinds of compartments. I told him the other day because he's the one that helped me get that money that I can go out and eat on and give to the Lord and help other people. I sent $200 to uh, the Philippines to help a church over there that uh, uh, Raymond uh, Lapping, R-E-Y-M-U-N-D, is on Facebook, and he belongs to an Assembly of God church over there. And it had its year old time, and they were looking around. Anyhow, he needed some funds, and I sent him some. So I got YouTube. I can be generous, and I gave all her, uh, I gave Andy, my helper, a hundred dollar tip, because I wouldn't have got nothing if he hadn't helped me. But you know, God goes before us and makes those crooked places straight, and that's a scripture. Now Thursday, you know. I only hear good with this ear, hear bad with this ear. I'm going to go have a hearing test and see if I can get me a hearing aid for this ear. I don't need one this ear. So I'm looking forward to that. James said he would pay for it. I am a blessed woman. So y'all have fun. Enjoy life. It's too short to miss out on enjoying life. And I pray each and every one of you enjoy today. God bless you. Now, I was going to get me some glasses. I always have fun getting me a pair of glasses to sign off on. Here's some pretty ones. They don't go. I want blue ones. Have I got any blue ones? Look at here. I ought to have some blue ones. Is this a blue one? I believe it is. It's red, white, and blue. It's got, it's, it's patriotic. And it's the heart shape. And you know how I love people here. Now, if you see it, let me show you close. Can you see that? It's blue. And, and that will do. And there's red there. It's red, white, and blue. For the United States of America, make America great again. You know, that's a good thing to say because it's going downhill fast if we don't do something about it. Here we go. Grandma had fun today. I hope y'all enjoyed listening. Listen to my friends. I've got a lot of YouTube friends that do YouTubers. And I love each and every one of them. So check them out. Oh yeah, Donnie Laws. I forgot about him. I love him too. You know what he does? He puts these cameras all in the woods. And you can go. Then he talks about it. And he's got special animals. He There's some cats in them woods that he discovered another one the other day. I enjoyed that. And the Appalachian Channel. I like that too. I like YouTube. There's so many interesting things on it. Especially since I came along, girls and boys and grown-ups. Lord forgive me, but I'm just so proud. Of, I'm just so proud of y'all. 
joining me all the time. Walk that path <coughs> where Jesus would be pleased with you. Bye-bye.